All right, so this is just a little uh, help with the thermodynamics problems. Actually, you don't really run into any problems for a while, so it's good review. If you have your notes already, um, then this should be pretty quick because you can go through here and you know find the definition of thermodynamics and three examples um, of thermodynamic systems and all that stuff. So some good definitions and a chart with the different freezing points and what each law is and that sort of thing. So uh, also important is, you know, after you get past all these, you know, filling in the charts and the zeroth law and the first law, that sort of thing, second law, what entropy is, all this stuff, you finally get to here. And this is what, um, these are the equations you're going to use. And you need to look up what each one of these variables means. And you can just, you know, kind of hop back to the, to this thing here. So Q is energy transfer, right? Um, and it's good to write the units joules and then you'll do m mass and kilograms so you'll kind of go through each one of these formulas talk about what each one of them means and then you're going to do a new problem but it pretty much follows what's going on here so it's good you know it's good practice to jump back and forth between these um, when you get on here so if you drop a kilogram that's 90 degrees and four liters of water at 25 degrees celsius you can list out and um you know kind of go through the problem very similar to the example one except in here you don't know what the final temperature is so you know the temperature initial is 25 degrees celsius temperature final is what you're looking for right so i guess actually that goes down here um you know, you know all sorts of other stuff. You got kilograms of water, the kilograms of metal. Um, you're gonna have to look up the specific heat capacities, but if you look here, you know, you can find that right here of water and aluminum. You can use those numbers. Kind of just follow here. Um, only difference is you're you're not you don't know the difference in temperature, you're you're finding the difference in temperature. So you're gonna use this formula, but you're going to have to set them equal to each other because you'll know everything else about them um, except the final temperatures. Whereas here, um, uh, what, what were you looking for here? Energy transferred. Okay. Um, so anyway, try that one out. That one you're just kind of following the leader on. To so know in the end, you're going to be using this idea that the, the energy transfer from aluminum has got to equal the energy transfer from water. So you know, the equation, let's see, where, where are our equations on there? Um, what's on the back of this? No. Oh, yeah, so our equation was uh, Q energy transfer equals M times heat capacity times change in temperature. Um, well, you know the Q for water has got to equal the Q for aluminum which is just its mass times its uh, heat capacity times its change in temperature. Um, so, yeah, basically we're gonna have water and aluminum, but you can just set these two things equal. So really you need mass of the water, which, you know, it says up there's four kilograms of water times specific uh, heat capacity of water, which off the top of my head I don't know, but I look up here and say one, 4184, and then, you know, I'm going to have that. Um, and instead of change in temperature, instead of change in temperature, I'm going to write um, temperature final minus temperature initial. Now, I know I can actually put a number in here because for the water, my initial temperature was 25 degrees Celsius. So down here, I'm going to put a 25 degrees C. I still don't know TF. Um, I do have to write this number, 4184. 
All right, four, one, eight, four, and that's joules per, uh, what are the units on this? Kilograms times degree Celsius. Joules per kilograms times degree C. Okay, so I got my kilograms here. I got my 4184 joules per kilogram degree Celsius, but the kilograms there cancel with the kilograms there. The Celsius here is going to cancel with the Celsius here. And we basically are going to need to solve for this, but on the other side of the equation, you're going to have the exact same thing, but for aluminum. So aluminum, you have a one kilogram mass, and aluminum has its own number, which was uh, 900. Oh, that's a lot nicer. Joules per kilogram degree C, right? And its temperature final, I still don't know, but I do know its temperature initial was 90 degrees Celsius. So you got this set up. Um, Celsius will cancel with Celsius, and we'll be left with joules, canceling with joules on the other side. Anyway, um, you're basically going to have to distribute this and distribute this. I would put the 1 and 900 together and the 4 and 4184 together and get all, you know, apply the, apply the algebra skills you need to get TF by itself, because in the end, you're looking for TF. So, you know, this should get you at least enough of a start. 4 times 4184 joules equals or times TF minus 25 the degrees Celsius I already canceled off. Um, here you have 900 joules times TF minus 90 degrees C. So, you know, whatever number this is distributed, whatever the 900 distributed, get all the TFs to one side, and then divide to get TF by itself. Your end goal is to find TF. So that one's pretty algebra heavy, but I think with this setup, you'll be able to do that problem pretty well. And what you should notice is, even from looking at here, it really depends on what they give you on how easy or difficult the problem is to solve. And then the second question, um, you have a 3 16th inch acrylic box with those dimensions, and then there's an insulation thing on top. Um, determine the thermal conductivity uh, for the insulating material if you have a 25 watt bulb. So if they start talking about watts and stuff, um, we're gonna be looking at energy transfer things, right? Um, so I think they want to know, yeah, thermal conductivity. So where's our thermal? Here we go. Um, thermal conductivity, we need the power over the area and change in temperature, right? Um, so yeah, so we're going to have to kind of do, I guess it's kind of like this problem here where you can do the area um, and get it going. So hang on a sec, let's look at that. One change to this that I would make. Oh, almost missed it. Um, the water goes from cold to warm. So you'd actually want um, final minus initial to keep it a positive number. Um, the aluminum starts out hot and ends up cold. So actually you would switch switcheroo this and say 90 minus uh, TF because you kind of want it to be um, you want it to be a positive number on both sides. If it starts out warmer and ends up colder, you got a bigger number minus a smaller number. So just make sure you fix that. The second problem is asking about thermal conductivity. So you kind of want to focus on you know a problem like this where you're looking for K uh, the thermal conductivity um, and you can know the area because you have a 10 by 10 piece and so it's very similar to this it says the thickness and the area um, and an unknown um, material the thickness of the material um, temperature difference 
it says it's 10 degrees higher inside than outside, so you already know the change in temperature. Um, the change in time you're going to need. So we got our lowercase t is time and uppercase t is temperature. So you'll be using uh, these formulas right here. Okay, so you're basically going to be. Uh, I think you can just solve it for P. You can use the P one. You don't need the Q one because power is the watts. So we'll have power here and we'll be able to substitute in our um, known values. So yeah, should be able to pretty much use this formula right there and hack it out. And actually, if you look at this list, better than using this formula, would be to use this one because it's already saved for, or solved for k equals. So you really just have to do k equals p l over a delta capital T. So make note of that. Oops, I didn't write that down here. Since we're looking for k, you have to search through for the other knowns. But yeah, we pretty much know all those pieces from reading the word problem. And that'll give you a chance to get used to figuring out what P means, what L means, what A means, what Delta capital T means. And then you're just going to solve for K, which it's, you know, it's kind of nice that it's already solved for that. A lot less algebra work than the previous time. Um, define what U value means, define what V value means, and then this is very similar to, so it's just good practice. Um, you know, going through this stuff. Here's U value, um, P value, and it's pretty similar to this problem where you can find the R value for this. And then this is hard to see, but there's a stud here. It's just a two by four stud. Okay. Um, which has a different R value than the one in this example. Um, so just watch out for that and the rest should be pretty straightforward and if you're saying mr good how do i find uh the r value of fiberglass batting or extruded polystyrene or wood lap siding or 5 16 5 8 inch drywall or construction um, if you look at the last page of this packet it's got an r value for each one of these look there's 5 8 inch drywall r value 0.56 extruded polystyrene right so you can look up all the different r values and then the woods two by four and a two by six and that sort of thing so that should be pretty easy because you have the, all those numbers at the back and you can follow um, follow this example that you got here and then last but not least the final problem is about a student and the bus temperature and their skin temperature and energy transfer again this is pretty darn similar to the problem right here um, with a blanket somebody in class so you'll be able to figure this one out if you kind of read through this you're just going to be using these equations here and find the energy transfer and then be a-okay all right so anyway I hope you at least have an idea of where to attack each one of these problems and then we can check the answers uh, when we get back together or ask questions, send me an email if you get stuck. I will talk to you later.